Hey, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, we're gonna go over some of the fundamentals to building an SEO friendly page on your website using Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Here in this video, we're gonna discuss the basics and the fundamentals so that you're building your page in a way that sets you up for the best possible chance of success when it comes to optimizing your website in Google. I'm using a site out of the Generate Press site library, and we're gonna take a look at some of the most important things that you can do when building your pages. And we're gonna cover everything from proper HTML, you know, semantic ordering of headlines, for example, to other things that Generate Press handles for you that are super important, as well as other things that you can do to better optimize your site. All of these things are really great for accessibility, for SEO purposes, and just general usability of the website. So even though our focus in this case is on making sure our site ranks well in Google, it also has a number of other really great side effects that benefit basically everybody that visits your site. So the first thing that I wanna do is take a look at this page and I wanna point out a couple of the things that Generate Press handles for you out of the box. So if we just right click and inspect this page, the first thing that I wanna do is point out that there is a really important accessibility feature called a skip to content link. Now you may have never noticed this, but it's really important for screen readers and people who might be using keyboard navigation to skip to the content and get past a bunch of this other content that might be on the page, but not visible specifically. When they first come to the page, you know, we don't necessarily need them to be navigating through the menu and the logo. And in cases like this, where we have a top bar up there, so what we have, if we take a look at this header wrap div, there's an A link inside of this that says skip to content. Now, in terms of whether this is visible or not, you know, we can't see it on the page, but screen reader users or people who are navigating the website with a keyboard are going to come across this and, you know, screen readers are going to announce this skip to content. And what this is going to do is this links to the div on our page with the ID of content. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we can see that that's right here. And it's essentially going to jump the reader or the visitor directly to that particular container, which means they can get right into the website's content. That's a super crucial thing that should exist on every website. And of course, Generate Press adds that automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. A number of other great things that are happening here that Generate Press is handling for us is setting the proper HTML tags on lots of these elements, like for instance, our header tag. Then inside of that, if we expand this down a little bit, we have our menu inside of the nav tag, which is exactly what we want. Then if we scroll down just a little bit, we find that our content is inside of a main tag. We have article tags, all these different things that you have to understand and know about, which Generate Press just handles for you. And again, all of this is going to benefit SEO and accessibility, which of course, like I mentioned, is done for you. So let's move into the back end of the website and we're gonna take a look at some of the most important things that you can control. So number one here is when we're building our hero section, this is typically where our H1 is going to live on the page. Now, of course, your headings can have a heading level of between H1 through H6, and these are all important both for structure, navigation, and SEO purposes. So your H1 is essentially your page title, and you wanna make sure that you only have one H1 per page. So in this case, our H1 is this you know modern real estate firm headline, and that's the only H1 on this page. This is going to dictate the page title. This is what search engines are going to pick up and place inside of the search results if you don't already have a title tag set, which we'll talk about later on. Now, of course, there's a ton of different heading levels. So where would we start using the next ones? Well, if we scroll down to the second section on our website and we click on this headline, you can see that this one uses the HTML tag of H2. When we use the H2, this is designating another section on our website, and that's going to be broken up. A good way to see this would be if you use a table of contents plugin. Oftentimes they're gonna scan heading levels and they're going to nest the headline levels inside of each other, kind of like you might see in Google Docs or inside of a Word doc. So then if we scroll down a little bit further, we can see that this next section is called featured listings. And this one again is an H2. Now in this case, when we have these posts, which happen to be our houses for this particular real estate agency, the actual address of this property is going to be another level down, which in this case is an H3. So you can see how they start to nest inside of each other. We're designating a new section with this H2 and then another key piece of information here, such as the post name or maybe your blog article name would be an H3, as you can see. Then another case where we would go even deeper down, if we scroll down here, we find that we have this H2 for the client testimonial section. Then each of the testimonials are an H3. Then we can scroll down again and there might be another section inside of testimonials, which in this case is this accreditation and rewards. And that one goes back to an H3. So you can see how they kind of designate and break up sections throughout the site. 
So understanding and using these heading levels properly is extremely critical. Then of course, we wanna make sure that we're setting our content to the paragraph tag. So you don't want to accidentally use one of these other heading levels and just change the way it looks visually, because again, that will mess up the hierarchy and just kind of the understanding of your website from the perspective of really any visitor and then also Google or any other search engine. In case you're curious, this div tag can be used to style text that doesn't really matter in the context of the content of the page. Maybe it's something more visual or like an accent. Let's go back up to the area that we saw that was listing all of our properties here. And let's take a look at the image elements themselves. So if we click on the image, of course, I'm using a generate blocks image component here. And on the right side in the block settings, we see the section for alt text and we have the title attribute here. You probably have come across alt text or read about it. Alt text is very important because it serves a number of purposes. Like we've talked about a couple of times now, people who might be using screen readers will need to understand the context of the image or what visual is representing, and that's done via alt text. So of course we have this first image selected here. So we could say, you know, backyard of house with large pool. We wanna keep this relatively brief and add just a little bit of context to describe what the image is. This also is really important if for whatever reason the image doesn't load, then this alt text will display. So it serves again, a number of purposes. The title attribute down here is just going to be the title that shows up if we hover over the image. So realistically, you could take you know, the same information in the alt text, or you could write something unique in the title. But really, for the most part, the alt text is the most critical portion of this. Another really great thing about alt text and the title attributes is that they can end up showing up in Google image search results, which is actually a powerful source of traffic in some cases. So here's yet another example where doing these things for the sake of SEO also just benefits your website for proper HTML organization and of course has the additional super great benefit of making your website more accessible. The next thing I want to cover is the ability in generate blocks to set the proper HTML semantics on individual containers. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we take a look at a container, if we scroll down in the advanced section here, we'll find this option that says tag name. So these will probably look somewhat familiar. And in this case, the default is div. Now a div is just a generic container. It really represents nothing special. It's just a way to denote the specific type of container that we're using. And in this case, a div is totally fine. Let's take a look at an example of where this would actually be important. So if we click on this container, if we scroll back up so we can see what's highlighted. If we take a look at this div, it would make sense to go ahead and set this as a section. Now, sections are just exactly what they sound like. They're portions of the content through the site, and a section really needs to have a headline to designate it properly. So in this case, of course, we already touched on the fact that we do have a headline and it's an H2. So now we've set the proper semantic heading level, and we've set this container to a section, which is what we want in this case. When you're using a blog query loop, for example, it would make sense to set that container as an article. And then of course, something like footer, as you can see, that's gonna be important to wrap your footer in a container. But again, Generate Press can handle that for you automatically. So setting your containers to have a section tag is fairly important as well, and just a good idea for proper HTML. So another thing I wanna look at here is when we look at generate blocks buttons, again, when we're down at the bottom of the block controls in the advanced tab, when we scroll down, we can see the button type is set to link. Now this might be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with the difference between a link and a button, but what's gonna happen here is if we have this set to any URL, then on the front end, if we scroll down and take a look, we can just right click and inspect. And what happens is this turns into an A link because this is going somewhere. This is taking us either to a new page on our site or perhaps an external link. So this is the proper HTML structure that's taking place here. We need an A link that has the link destination. And then we have a span with the text inside of it. In this case, we also have another span, which is our generate blocks icon as well. And if we were to switch this from a button type of link back into a button, then the link functionality actually goes away because what buttons do in HTML is they're going to perform some action on the page, like maybe open a pop-up or display some sort of hidden content. So you have the option to set that proper HTML here on the button as well. But in general, you're probably going to want your button to actually go somewhere. So this link is gonna be exactly what you want. Another really awesome piece of functionality that we have in a number of places is this ARIA label. Now ARIA labels are a deep conversation in themselves, but what it allows you to do is designate additional parameters about this particular button or element. You'll often see these ARIA labels used in, for example, a pop-up. When you click on the X, if you were to inspect that X, it might have an ARIA label of close. 
So that's another helpful thing for screen readers to denote an action on the page that may not be explicitly clear just from that individual element. ARIA labels give you another layer here to help screen reader users. Now I wanna cover just a couple more additional SEO enhancements you can make to your page. One of which is of course, utilizing an SEO plugin. Now I mentioned that the H1 is going to be picked up as your page title and that will show up in search engines, but that may not be always what you want the search results page to show. So what we could do is add a free SEO plugin like Yoast or Slim SEO. And often what will happen is if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of our page, there'll be a new section down here that says page title, and you can input something that then Google will use as priority over that H1. Using SEO plugins in general have a lot of other benefits as well. So if you're not already using one, go investigate some of the many amazing free SEO plugins that are out there. You don't need to spend a bunch of money. Often the free versions are more than capable enough. Another really great thing that you can consider is the idea of internal linking. So let's say for example, in this section, you were talking about your experience in a particular city selling real estate there. What you could do is highlight that portion of the text and link to somewhere else on your website where that's relevant, like a landing page or a blog post or something like that. This is just known as internal SEO or internal linking, and it will help the search engine crawlers find relevant content on your page. And it's just a really good idea, both you know, from the user experience perspective, but of course, from the Google SEO perspective. Many SEO plugins will often analyze and help you with those as well. Some can even identify opportunities as it scans through your WordPress site. Another important thing to consider is mobile friendliness when it comes to SEO. Over the years, we've seen Google get more and more explicit with its expectation of mobile friendliness and websites that aren't mobile friendly sometimes are even de-indexed entirely. So if we take a look at how this works, I could look at you know, this particular container here and in generate blocks, I have these responsive controls right up here. If I choose show for tablet, we can see that our screen size is going to shrink and then our sections here are collapsing. This is done with the flex controls over here. So on the tablet size, we're changing this container to a flex direction of column. And if we go back just to the desktop size, for example, we can see that this flex direction changes back to row. Now, again, of course, I already chose the tablet. We can also take a look at the mobile devices as well. Same idea applies. You can control all the different parameters that you need based on the screen size here. Also in Generate Blocks Pro 1.7 and later, if you had a global style attached to this, we could just call this, you know, example style. I'll pop this on. Then we have more controls here. So of course there's the tablet and mobile that we just looked at. We can also create our own rules here as well. There's tons of flexibility we can look at here in a future video, so drop in the comments below if you're interested in learning more about at rules and generate blocks. The final thing I wanna to cover today is site speed optimization and what we can do to make sure our website loads as fast as possible. One thing is going to be your web host. So we have a page on our website where we have a couple of different great web host recommendations. That's gonna play a large part in how quickly your website is served and how things are optimized. So make sure you're investing in good hosting. Some other really important things that we can control on our website is ensuring all of the images that we've uploaded to our site are properly sized. If you have a block, like let's say down here, and this image is you know 350 pixels wide, then there's really no reason to upload an image that's bigger than 350 pixels. You're just wasting resources and causing more load on your server, which of course makes load time slower, and that will negatively impact your visitors and just the general performance of your website. There's a lot to be said for making sure that your website is as fast as possible because it has a direct impact on conversion rates as well. So how do we know if our website is highly optimized? Well, what we can do is utilize some really fantastic tools, one from Google called PageSpeed Insights and another product called GT Metrics. What I'll do is take my live site URL and then in the Google PageSpeed tool, I'll just go ahead and paste this in and click on analyze. We'll let this run for just a second. And you can see after the tool runs, we're getting a performance report on mobile devices of 92 out of 100, which is amazing. Of course, there's still a little bit of room for improvement, but we've done nothing except just try our best on the website. Using a high quality web host and using products like Generate Press and Generate Blocks, which are highly optimized from the outset. If we scroll down, this tool will give us some of the ways that we can increase the performance. And these are often best handled with performance optimization plugins such as Perf Matters. And while we're still on this discussion, if I scroll back up and we switch to the desktop tab, we can see that we're doing even better on desktop. This tool in particular on the mobile devices does throttle the speed artificially just a little bit, but it's really good to leave it as is because if somebody has a weak mobile data connection, you still want your website to be as fast as possible and not assume they have a great internet connection. 
Then we could pop our same URL into GT Metrics. We can click on Test Now. And you can see GT Metrics gives us a different kind of report, but we're still getting an excellent grade. Now this test server is coming from Vancouver, Canada, and my particular web host server is located in Atlanta, Georgia, so it's kind of opposite ends of the continent. And even despite that, we're still getting a performance score of 100% and a structure score of 96%. Now there's some more information when you sign up for a free account, but between these two tools, you're gonna be able to diagnose performance issues in a really comprehensive way. This gives you plenty of data to go off of. So with all of that, we've covered a lot of really fundamental things that are going to make your website even more performant, both from a performance perspective, but also a Google SEO perspective, and everything we've done will increase accessibility as well. So all of these different things that you can do have massive benefits no matter who is visiting your website. If you have any additional questions about the things that we've covered in this video, please don't hesitate to leave a comment, or if there's something specific you'd like to see, let us know, and we'll be sure to cover it in a future episode. Again, my name is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.